Welcome back to another episode of Two Dudes Watch Cartoons, the podcast where two dudes, that is us, watch cartoons. I am your host, Evan. Ha! Oh my God, I'm not Evan, I'm Alex. <laughs> and I'm Evan. Uh, wow. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have strayed too far from the beaten path. Um, today we are joined by the... Uh, Phenomenal Myron Butler, our good friend, host of the Sports Time with My podcast. Myron, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing good, dude. So happy to be on the show with you boys. Love two dudes watching cartoons. <laughs> Alex knows who he is. <laughs> what a start to the show. I love it. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy. Is that the official title? I've just been calling it uh, Space Jam too because... That is basically what it is. Yeah. Before we get into Space Jam 2, uh, what what is our history, our personal histories with Space Jam, the original movie? The, yeah. I think it came out in 96. That's one of like the earliest movies I can remember seeing mm-hmm. in my lifetime. 100%. Space Jam, to me, I thought was a classic. Mm-hmm. But uh, internet has bashed it hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think that for me, it was like, one of those movies as a kid where you like watch it every day for like a year of your life, in all honesty. I thought the first one was laugh out loud hilarious. If you had asked six-year-old Alex, oh, what's the best movie of all time? You'd be like, oh, a Space Jam with Michael Jordan, obviously. Like when I was watching just the intro clip this morning, and they unironically in the original one. The, the title sequence comes up and it's the great song. It's welcome to the jam. It's an amazing song. Everyone knows it. And it goes starring Michael Jordan. And the next person it's starring is unironically Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and I think that is so amazing. And it like took itself so seriously where this new one maybe didn't take itself as seriously. And that may be one of the differences, I think. I, have any of you guys watched the old one recently myron i know you just watched it probably this afternoon both i just double dipped and watched both because my cousin was like dude this is one of the worst movies i've ever seen <laughs> i was like dude get out of here dude like that's offensive it's a space jam you're talking about uh-huh. he was like man you really liked it because you were 10 <laughs> when's the last time you actually rewatched space jam as a grown man I'm like, okay let's rewatch it He's got some points. <laughs> I don't know. I so I right after watching S- Space Jam two, I went back and watched Space Jam, and I, I think it holds up pretty well for a movie that's from nineteen ninety six. That's for kids. I actually laughed out loud at a couple of parts, which, uh, without getting into too much detail, I don't know that I can say about Space Jam: <laughs> A New Legacy. I did have a couple notable laugh out loud moments during A New Legacy. Michael I, B. Jordan? That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that was hilarious. one of the funniest things I think I've ever actually seen of all time. That and that's so the one funny, thing that bro. saved this movie for me. Is I was like, oh my God, Michael Jordan is going to be in it. And it was Michael B. Jordan. That's really classic. You guys couldn't get Michael A. Jordan? <laughs> I went into this movie just to give a little heads up. I loved the first one. And before I had watched it, I just watched it this morning for the first time. Before I had watched it, I heard horrible reviews, like really, (laughs) really bad reviews. So I actually went in with pretty low expectations. And while there was some, I, I definitely understand people's gripes. And while there was some parts that I literally rolled my eyes at, I, there was the, I think, Honestly, the first half of the movie, I did not very much enjoy. The second half, I, I enjoyed more. But the first half was really bad. <laughs> I stopped watching in the 55-minute mark. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a week later, you guys were like, let's do the podcast. I was like, I have to finish it. <laughs> and the second half, the second half definitely holds up its weight. The second half is really good. Uh huh. So the premise for the new one... Um which I I have my own gripes with, but it's that (laughs) Warner brothers invites LeBron James to their studio. uh, And they want to like scan him in and basically use his likeness as 
uh, as an entertainment property in perpetuity forever, which he has. What's your gripes? <laughs> I want to hear those two. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll get there. So they want to use his likeness in their entertainment properties. Uh, so th- it's almost this like fourth wall breaking thing of like, we're just talking about Warner Brothers, the studio right now. And the whole plot Warner is- Brothers was the biggest character of the movie. Yes. Yeah. And the whole plot's devised by the villain Don Cheadle or the algorithm because I refuse to say Al G rhythm. That's the <laughs> dumbest fucking name I've ever heard. I knew you were going to hate it. I knew you were going to hate his name. I just got it right now. Yeah. I just got Al-G-rhythm. it right now. <laughs> Wow. He's algorithm. Yeah. That's so annoying. He's just wow. the algorithm. Oh, it it bugged me too. That pisses me off. I'm mad I didn't get it right over my head. Uh, that's how bad <laughs> it is, really. Oh my god. So the 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 plot is constructed by the algorithm which goes rogue and scans LeBron James into the server, whatever. Digital space. And his son. And his son. And his son. There's emotional turmoil between the son and LeBron James. I need to cover it. It's my favorite part of the movie is we literally take a high school musical. You can either basketball or you can make video games, son. You can't do both. Who do you think you are? Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. I laughed at, I think it's the first five minutes of the movie. The plot hits you over the head. And I was like, this is not where we're going, but it was. They literally did the meme of like, it's not my dream, dad. It's yours. <laughs> and it was just like how aggressive he was. He was so aggressive. He was in the beginning. He was a dick. What are you doing? You don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, Back with your gripe, my gripe with the whole premise of this movie is. Don Cheadle scans them into the server verse, holds LeBron's son hostage and says, I'm keeping him unless you play and beat my characters in a game of basketball. When, why would a villain do that? If he has all the power, LeBron has no mechanism of control, has no (laughs) bargaining chips here. The whole premise of the movie is like, why give him any out at all? Yeah. It was so forced. <laughs> it it doesn't make sense. It literally yeah. doesn't make sense. Like, why would he play? Um, so that's my first gripe with the movie. So I have a question for you, Myron. LeBron James is one of the greatest basketball athletes of all time. Same with Michael Jordan. There's always the question of who's the better basketball player. I want to know from you right here, right now, Michael Jordan or LeBron James, which one's the better athlete? Oh, actor? Yeah. So that was a twist. LeBron could I'm I'm happy he twisted that. Um, yeah. I'm happy to never see LeBron act again, honestly. It's so bad. <laughs> it was like I rewatched Space Jam 1 after Space Jam 2 today. And as I was watching, I was thinking like Michael was just such a better actor. Like when he picked up Tweety Bird, he was. as the Tweety Bird got a hurt. Yeah. It was so much mm-hmm. better. LeBron was just, it was very hard to watch, honestly. In his defense, I will say, like, he had the, the ask of LeBron as an actor was a little bit uh, maybe heavier a burden because he has to do these emotional scenes with his kid, whereas Michael Jordan was essentially just playing himself. Mm. So, yep. you know, I'll footnote that maybe LeBron's not the worst actor, but wasn't convincing <laughs> whatsoever. It was a bad script for LeBron, for sure. Yeah, and yeah like you said, Mike just played Mike the entire movie, and that's why it worked. They try to make Le- they mm-hmm. try to make LeBron be like another LeBron that no one's ever met before. Yes, I think that's a good point. Is I was like, this is not the LeBron James I know. Yeah, and he's yeah. like bossy to his team, and it's just like I think they were trying to make fun of like what people, what the haters say about him, but it just didn't work as as they wanted to. I don't think. I thought the funniest part of the first half of the movie was when they're like pitching LeBron on using his likeness to make movies like this. And he's like, this is a terrible idea. No one would ever want to watch this. It's a horrible, I hate it. And he like walked out and I was like, I'm feeling pretty similar about this movie right now. LeBron, we're in the same wavelength. 
the whole premise of the movie seemed self-deprecating. <laughs> it did. So you're telling yes. me the the actual narrative arc is that Warner Brothers is desperate for <laughs> attention and will do anything to get people to watch their movies? Interesting. Wait, and the other part that's like really self-deprecating is when the tunes go from uh, 2D animation to like 3D animation, they're like pissed about it. They're like, no, not on my watch. But like, that's like also part of the movie was bringing them to the modern era in a 3D. Like, it was very weird. It was like, you guys are the ones doing this, but you're like mad about it. I just hated how the first 15 minutes seemed like a Nike commercial. Yeah. It Maybe that's just what we live in now, but everyone had on beat headphones like at the middle of the game. It was just so many advertisements and they play they showed every character in HBO Warner Brother history. I didn't even know that they were part of some of these movies. We'll get into a list of who we saw. I, I want to know who you have in your notes because there was an unbelievable amount of cameos. It's like someone told Warner Brothers, they're like, hey, people love Easter eggs <laughs> and like callbacks and references and it doesn't matter how many you do they just love they them. just love them every time <laughs> dude the iron giant i didn't even know they even owned him <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even know that like what the heck there was many of them I, yeah. the, when it was there i was like what they own it <laughs> yeah the whole thing basically was a commercial for warner brothers slash hbo max It just, I don't know, it takes so much out of the movie because it serves zero purpose. They bring in all these characters during the actual basketball game to, like, fill the stands or whatever. None of these background characters have dialogue. No. And they keep, like, panning to different random characters. There was one character that kept showing up in the background, though, which I think was supposed to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze from the Batman yes. uh, movies with George yes, Clooney. Yes, it was. Except it's not, Ar- it's not, the guy doesn't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so it's just this guy in white, like makeup. <laughs> and if I wasn't like trying to figure it out, like who the fuck is that? Like no one would get that. Like, it, it looks nothing like, it looks nothing like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Except it's not. Me off. Cause he was in the background for a solid two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, but that shit worked because I watched Batman and Robin last night. <laughs> um, it was crazy to me how many superhero references they worked in because they worked in literally almost uh, mm-hmm. one that I super appreciated is we've actually mentioned this on the podcast when we talked about Zack Snyder's The Justice League was the Wonder Woman intro theme music. When Lola Bunny was trying to become an Amazon, they literally played Zack Snyder's score. And I appreciated that. That was one reference. I was like, that's like a small detail that I really enjoy. But there was just so many obscure references and crossovers. I mean, we got to see the Looney Tunes and LeBron in like every Warner Brothers property. Um, I personally would not mind watching LeBron of Thrones and LeBron in the Chamber of Secrets. I think those would be decent movies. I'd be curious what the plot is. If it's like magic versus basketball or, you know, like (laughs) he's already the king. So how many times did they say King James? Probably 200. It could have been a drinking game. game. (laughs) That montage, I will say, although I hated it everywhere else in the movie, that montage where him and bugs pop up in different, like when they popped up in the matrix, that was like, that was the funniest part of the movie to me. All of the other references outside of that montage could have been cut. One of my other big gripes with this movie is like, uh, right when he gets pulled into the cartoon world, he's like really short. And then there's this like really (sighs) dumb, Joke where he's like, oh my, I'm shorter than Kevin Hart. That was terrible. (laughs) I could have written that. Like, I could have written that joke. And that was was part of the trailer. They advertised that. (laughs) They advertised that as the the big punchline of the movie. I was like, damn, that's going to be tough. I did write down in my notes, though. I enjoyed that in the same sequence when he first becomes a cartoon. I did enjoy when he swapped his beard and his hair in a classic cartoon style. I think when people were in the cartoon, like total cartoon world, uh, those were some of the best bits I enjoyed. Like you said, when they were recruiting people, but when they brought it back to the real world, the 2D animation, it was just like really obvious to me that Don Cheadle was like acting to no one. And... (laughs) I love Don Cheadle, but man, some of the shit he said in this movie, I like 
did one of these uh, and like rubbed my eyes. I was like, no, he did not just say that. It was very questionable about the Oscars that he's has, you know, after this performance. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, come on, Don, you're better than this. But no, Bizarre, you're 100% right. Space Jam 1 had way better cutaways from the Looney Tune world. They had some yes. good plot lines, like the Charles Barkley on the, the girl mm-hmm. basketball court and he gets his butt kicked yes. and they're like, get out of here, yeah. bro. Be gone. Yeah, like, it's, it's like a funny scene. Be like, gone. <laughs> the cutaways <laughs> in the new legacy were terrible. Every non-Looney Tunes scene was like not, not good to watch. I agree. You can tell he really phoned it in this performance. And it's sad to me because I, the last movie I watched before Space Jam 2 was actually his other new movie that's on HBO Max, yes. No Sudden Moves, which is this crime mob movie that's actually really good and he does a phenomenal job. But uh, yeah, he he really phoned it in for this one. It was it was not good. And they kept what was with the like the clippy character, like the random <laughs> CG character. It was someone for him to talk to. Oh, man. I think all the complaints we've listed are very valid. But I did write down in my notes that the worst part of the whole movie is the term server verse. <laughs> Server verse. It's absolutely garbage. It's a mouthful to say. And you could literally just say the server. And I think everyone would know what you mean. Uh huh. Would you say Space Jam 1 was a better movie still? Oh, yeah. Oh, leaps and bounds better. <laughs> leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds. Dude, Bill Murray carried the team on part one as well. Oh, I was going to say, why was there no Bill Murray? They should have thrown in Bill Murray in this one. And it would have been like, a oh, that really boosted this one for me. So simple. It's definitely got to be the only like the only part two movie where no one from part one's in it. None. Not besides Bugs Bunny. Yeah, besides Bugs and besides the Loonies, not a single cameo from all these NBA players that are alive. Like when people rush to the stands, you didn't have Charles rush to the stands to watch the game. Maybe Charles has some dialogue. Who was the announcer they had, Myron? I know who the one announcer was, but not the basketball one. Is he famous? Lil Ro. Lil Ro. That's, a, that's the cop from, uh, from Get Out. Yeah. No, I know the cop from Get Out. Who was the <laughs> other one? Ernie Johnson. He's been doing NBA TNT for like 40 years. See, we don't know that, Mike. <laughs> yeah, we're, I meant like, were you like, wow, to see him? Was that like a... Because I mean, even in the first one, I knew these basketball players. And I was like, wow, they got all these cool stars. Like, it was cool to see Ernie, but, like, he is, like, the commentator of sports. Okay. You know, as far as basketball is concerned. Mm-hmm. That's so good. So it was kind of cool to see Ernie Johnson. But, like, the other little role was, like, random in comparison to it being Ernie Johnson. It could have been Ernie and Charles Barkley, yeah. and it would have just made sense. You know? It would have just they, it would have made sense for the movie with Space Jam 1, Ernie and Barkley. They, they didn't do the same show together. That's crazy. Um, what about the NBA, the all-star team they had, the Goon Squad? Did you guys, Also, before we get into them, did you guys like that it was the Goon Squad and the Toon Squad? Why the hell did they not bring back the Monstars, one of the greatest names of all time? It was just lazy. It Is was so <laughs> forced and lazy, dude. Yeah. The characters, were, the, the, the <laughs> mob stars were so much better. They were so good. The Monstars were characters. Why was Clay Thompson water fire? <laughs> I don't know. That was so Pretty random water to me. fire. Is that a nickname he had? I actually thought it was a nickname he must have had. That's how much I know about sports. The water would make sense because he's a splash brother, right? Yeah. Dame was sick. The Dame time was like really dope. I love how they did that. Yeah. But yeah, the water fire thing. He's a splash bro. So the water makes Not sense. Not the fire. <laughs> I understand he gets hot quick. He makes a lot of shots. But like, man, that was a reach. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was a reach. Oh man! And the point system was atrocious. Like I got it, it was a video game. They got up to like a thousand points in the first two <laughs> minutes of the game. What was that? It was, and then they is literally that, almost never scored it in the second half. Is what it was. And they never scored yeah. again. Like they didn't get any more style points. You gave style points for free, like candy, early in the game. They didn't have a single style move for the rest of the second half. Also, I get it was like to incorporate his son's video game, but it was so weird. They made it like a different style of basketball. Why not just play basketball here? At least count my twos and threes. Like, what do you mean? They spent so much time explaining the mechanics of, of the server verse of this video game, of like why 
uh, Don Cheadle needs to zap LeBron in. <laughs> like, it's almost, I feel like a lot of this movie, they just like weren't convinced themselves that it was going to work. So they, yeah. they overcompensate by explaining every, every little detail. <laughs> Okay, wait. I got a question. I got a question. We'll we'll get a little on track here. Which of the Looney Tunes is your guy's favorites? Still Daffy. Daffy's still great. Yeah. Big Daffy guy. And I like Sylvester for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Sylvester is great. Uh, I'm a Porky Pig guy. I really liked the rap battle sequence was my <laughs> other highlight of the movie. The rap battle was specifically a joke designed for him to say, that's all, folks, and do a mic drop. That's literally the only reason they had that bet. And that got so many points. And I didn't understand why LeBron kept saying this, like, step back, in and out. Is that a movie does? I thought it was also just a famous thing he did. I, I mean, like... That's why we had Myron. It's not, like, that famous. I wouldn't say, like... He's known for it? No, I mean, it's a good move. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's, like, known That's for not, that. It's not the King James move? No, he's like a duck or somebody. That's what King James does, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a note that LeBron James must have struck a deal. Like, you have to call me King James at least 24 times in the film. <laughs> he got paid per name. I literally wrote down when the game st- or when um, uh, Lil Rel gets zapped in to commentate, I wrote down, Lil Rel is such a sight for sore eyes. He's the only one that can sell a joke in this fucking movie. <laughs> like, nobody else yeah. is remotely funny in this thing. They have so many jokes. And maybe two or three of them land. And it's such a disappointment. The only reason the Michael B. Jordan worked is because of Daffy Duck. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like none of the actual characters are funny. Daffy made that funny because I actually believe like Rizard said, they actually do have a Michael Jordan cameo. Like they actually sold that. They got me. After all the reviews told me there were no cameos, the movie was so struggle. I was like still hopeful for a cameo. I really, they fooled me big time. And I think that's what sold the joke though, is I was like, oh my God, yes. Michael is going to be in the last 40 minutes of this film. He's going to help save the day. And I was like, this will be a nice wrap up, a good one to two circle where he comes in. He's like, you know what? I've been in a situation like this before. Let me coach you guys. He passes the torch off to LeBron at the end or something. You know, come on. They they could have done so much. Yes, that would have been a beautiful ending. They just got lazy. I agree. Uh, we could have written Space Jam 2 better. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny that they got Michael B. Jordan to at least like make fun of the fact that they didn't have the Michael Jordan. And it was funny that he was like in on the joke because I could uh, also see him not being down for a joke like that. And so I thought it was cool that he came and uh, he did that. Can we also talk about why? Yeah. <laughs> why did they choose to put Don Cheadle in sequence for the first <laughs> half of the basketball game? That was just bad costume. His whole well, he was in silver sequence to start. <laughs> also, wait, it also just drove me so nuts that Don Cheadle called himself and the rest of his team monsters, but that they weren't called the monsters. I'm sorry, that really bugged me. Like, why are you guys calling yourselves monsters? You're not the monsters that I know. You're that close. <laughs> it was so bad. Why the goon squad? <laughs> to rhyme with Toon Squad? I don't know. The first one was just such a better movie. Even like you said, the halftime speech where they all rally together. This one where the Michael Jordan cameo came in after that. I don't actually remember what what made them go out and win the second half. Was it just be fun and funny? Was that literally their plan? Be loony. Like be cartoon no, characters yeah, again? Be loony. Be loony. That make, okay, that's at least a better yeah, tagline. LeBron had fun. to loosen up because LeBron was too uptight. He was so uptight. And then like he was like <laughs> yeah. beating his son's ass. And he's like, yeah, to the crowd. And then I literally, he's looking at his son. And I was like, is this movie going to end with him just beating his son's butt in basketball? And I was glad son. that the son at least came over. That's what I'm saying is like the end of the movie was better than the first half like they hit the notes they needed to but man the the first half was like really bad and if we weren't podcasting i honestly don't think i would have finished it how about like father like like son lebron his son left a team and joined another team to win the championship (laughs) i also loved that (laughs) <laughs> that's really funny I love that they included him saying I'm taking my tail into South Beach so many people must have had PTSD from that they were like God, oh, I can't do that again <laughs> um, were there any good background cameos 
that you guys noticed? The White Walkers from Game of Thrones were really off-putting to me behind Don Cheadle the whole time. Because they'd cheer occasionally, and it was like, stop. You hear White Walkers, please stop. Yeah. They didn't want to see the nasty Batman and Robin outfits. Yeah, they went with like Adam West, Batman and Robin. And then, but they had like Mr. Freeze, they had the Penguin, which really looked like Danny DeVito to me. I actually, if any cameo was their own character, for some reason, I think Danny DeVito did the Penguin. <laughs> he came um, into the Penguin. Scooby Doo is sick. Scooby Doo, I saw Scooby Doo. Oh, the best cameo to me was the Rick and Morty one. I wasn't expecting it at all. It yes, caught me off guard yes. and it's right up our wheelhouse. I was like, hey, that's like part of the reason we started this podcast was because Rick and Morty's so awesome. And so that was funny to see their cameo in there because I didn't know. I guess I didn't know it was Warner Brothers. Doesn't that seem antithetical to what Rick and Morty is that they're part of? It's like included in this huge Do you know studio. how much money they must have paid Justin Roiland? They, he he was like, no, I don't want to do that. And then they sl- and then they slid a number across the table, and he goes, "Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do it." We'll like, yeah, okay, okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah, there were so many cameos though, but like you said, Evan, they were all animated or fake and had no purpose, so it just felt cheesy. Whereas. I did enjoy where the tunes or the Looney Tunes were interacting in those cameos. Those ones were the fun ones to me. Um, and the, Rick and Morty was, was someone they interacted with. The Wonder Woman one, the uh, Justice Matrix League. one, like you said, Justice League. They worked in a lot of decent mm-hmm. ones there. But there was no like voices or famous people that did these cameos. So it, literally there was no stake to it. There was nothing about it that was important. I don't know any other famous voices in it, but I know Zendaya voices Lola Bunny, who I also didn't know was debuted in Space Jam 1. Wait, Lola Bunny is new? As of Space Jam 96. I love that. She's an iconic character. Yeah, they, when, in that scene in the basketball gym when she when she meets Bugs, that's our, our first time meeting her as well. That's everyone's introduction to Miss Lola Bunny, who is an iconic character. It makes sense now that they were like, she's a basketball player because she literally, that's her thing. That's all she can do, yeah. That's all she can do. (laughs) She's a baller. It's hard to talk about this movie without just wanting to talk about Space Jam 1. It's true. There's not a lot to love here. Nothing stood out. This whole movie just felt like a commercial for almost specifically HBO Max. Like, hey, look at everything we have on our platform. It felt like a two-hour commercial. Hmm. You know, I didn't view it for the HBO at max angle, Evan, but I actually think that's probably what they were going with here. And I think what they did is they just paid people stupid amount of money to do it. And I think they poked fun at the fact that it wasn't like necessary or needed, but here we all are doing it. And it's probably going to work. And that's why they do things like this. Just I studied advertising in college and Look at us. We're talking about it now. We're promoting it also. It, pe- they were like good, bad, indifferent. People will talk about this to other people. As Bizarre used to always say, all publicity is good publicity. It's true. I, I still say that. Yeah. <laughs> you did used to say that. I did used to say that a lot. It's a weird thing to be saying at like 19 or 20, <laughs> when, like when we were all in college. <laughs> Very weird to say. Who are you preaching to? <laughs> I was studying advertising and I was under the assumption very strongly. Hey, you want to get lunch preside? All oh, publicity is good publicity. <laughs> uh, you never know who you're pitching to. You're always you're always gonna be. <laughs> Um, well, I, you know, I still have some notes about Space Jam 2 that we can go over, but I'm good if we wanted to jump into anything Space Jam 1 related, because that was honestly just such a superior movie. Oh, wait, I have a really funny note. There's a line in the movie (laughs) that doesn't seem real to me, but they got Don Cheadle to say to LeBron, oh, you want to be daddy of the year now? Yes. That was such a bad line. I I heard that line. I had to rewind it. (laughs) Watch it again. There's no way. There's no way he said that to another grown man. <laughs> People will be daddy of the year. All right. There was one joke. I don't even have it written down verbatim, but um, when everyone in the world gets scanned into the app for whatever reason, I forget who says it. Uh, it's like halftime or something, but like someone's like, I got to go to the bathroom. Uh, like the line's going to 
take forever or whatever. Just Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Daffy 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 Duck. Duck. Yeah. yeah, it's Daffy it was Duck. Daffy. Daffy Duck's the funniest part <laughs> of the movie. That one made me laugh out loud. <laughs> Daffy Duck is legitimately funny because he poses something a bit different than the Looney Tunes. You know, the Looney Tunes are all kind of chaotic and they have fun, but like Daffy Duck is the straight man of it all, or like he's the butt of the joke. Mm -hmm. And so he has like legitimately hilarious lines. And it wasn't until this movie that I realized it. And I was watching clips from space jam one that I was like, Oh wow. Daffy Duck is like comedy gold. He's hilarious. Like if you're looking to write some sort of comedy movie, whatever study Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny, they're a great comedy duo and it works for a reason. I think space jam one worked a lot better because they did have like the two comedic actors in there who were legitimately funny. I don't know if, Uncle Malik was supposed to serve that role in this new movie, but like his manager? No, his his uncle. It was wasn't it Uncle Malik? The one that I was like crying that. in the group hug at the end, who was like, "Beam me up, computer! Yeah. Like zap me into your you computer!" And so he's like, "What? Oh, I thought that was his manager. I didn't know it was Uncle Malik." See, that's how much invested in the movie I was. I was like, "This plot is just nonsensical." I know that he is extraneous to the family but also part of the family, if that makes any sense, like an uncle would be. Yeah, I don't know what he is. That's how much I was invested. I can't even tell you. Yeah. I don't know if he was supposed to be the comedic foil to LeBron, but they bar- they hardly use him. He wasn't super funny. He didn't have any standout moments, whereas like... I didn't know his name. Yeah, I don't know the actor's name, um, but like Bill Murray had some fucking hilarious lines in Space Jam. There was one where... <laughs> where he's asking Mike why he's like bad at golf or whatever, or why can't, I don't know. He's getting beat in golf, I think. And Bill Murray goes, it's because I'm white, isn't it? Like he's asking <laughs> why he's bad at sports. The, the other one is when they're playing golf, right when Michael Jordan gets pulled into the, into the tune world, uh, it's like as the, the fatter guy is taking a picture, and then Bill Murray <laughs> Once Michael Jordan gets sucked in, he snatches the camera and goes, what kind of camera is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's That's so Bill Murray. Yeah. The, the best line is right after that is as they're pulling off, he goes, I'm going to give us both twos on that one. <laughs> we were in no condition to play after what we just saw. <laughs> that's that actually was line, so man. funny. That's what I'm saying is this first movie. No, like I get what your cousin's saying is we enjoyed it because we were kids, but the first movie was legitimately like actual like comedy, whereas this was like all throwaway bits and like references and meta humor, which is fine some of the time. It's funny in the first one when they make fun of Michael Jordan playing baseball and how he's like, they may, that's funny, but it's not funny like calling LeBron like a bad dad or like, <laughs> or just the endless number of references they throw in there. The someone took the meta jokes and like went the wrong way with them. Yeah. It's like that meme where it's like, uh, or it's like uh, Powerpuff Girls where he accidentally adds like a chemical. Someone was like mixing like, okay, this is a good Space Jam movie. We need the Looney Tunes basketball player. Oops, added a million meta references. It's like for some reason, I feel like the movie should never happen. And I think they knew that. Yes. And it all was just forced. Yes. I think yes. they were forced to make the movie because of everyone talking about it on social media. I think they were forced. Everything just felt forced. The jokes felt forced. The cameos felt forced. Oh my God. It, Myron- it, it just, I, I don't think I would ever freely watch Space Jam 2 again. Like, I don't think I'm just going to watch that movie. I would probably still watch Space Jam 1. I would watch it again. I would watch Space Jam 1 again. But you have a great point, Myron, that I think the audience wanted this first. It wasn't like a studio driven yeah. idea. The audience was like LeBron and Michael. That's the debate. We need a new space jam with LeBron. And it was like talked about enough on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit and all of this that some person at a production studio was like, all right, let's do it. I guess we're going to cash money makes in. Sense. Yes, the money makes sense. Yeah. And if we're going to do it, let's get all our fucking shit in there and just shove it down their fucking throats. If they're going to watch it, they're going to watch it. And that's why the whole thing feels, it just feels hollow. It feels like a cash grab. It feels, I don't know, like gross almost. Like, I, this is so desperate. Parts of it felt desperate. There's yeah. like a couple of funny moments throughout, 
but such a thinly veiled uh, cash grab that it's just kind of sad. And I can't imagine like if you're LeBron, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, and you're constantly being compared to the the previous, you know, the other guy in the debate is Michael Jordan. Why are you only doing things that he's already done? Like whether you're a best, I don't know it. Well, you know, basketball well enough to debate one way or the other, but like, it doesn't look good if you're just following in his footsteps. Like that's not a feather in your cap for LeBron. Okay. Wait, I just looked something up because this is, I mean, this is the question we all want to know. How much money did LeBron make from space jam two at a runtime of 115 minutes? LeBron made $150 million from that. By itself. That's not even counting the extra shit that's going to come with it. Yeah. That's his one-time fee for being on it. Advertisement. People are buying his jerseys, all that shit. Exactly. His jersey sales will go up. His ticket sales will go up. His Instagram followers will go up. Like, it's very calculated. It's very, it's, it's a cash grab. It's like. On all fronts, it's it is it's a PR stunt, I guess you could say almost. This movie yeah. is literally like, and it felt like it. Yes, yes, and that's the problem. Is if you could do it, make it feel natural. Okay, a good example of this is like, have you guys seen Ready Player One? Yeah, I feel like that is a good movie where there is a lot of references, but it kind of makes sense to the plot, and it's still like a good story driven thing. Whereas this was not a good story driven thing. It was basketball or coding, son. Pick. And LeBron was kind of a bully for the first half of the movie till he learned his lesson. Yeah, I, that was a very interesting part too. Like, like just the attack on the premise in Space Jam One. Michael didn't need to be like saved from anything. He just had to realize he still liked basketball. Yes, like LeBron had to overcome being like a shitty father. Like, why? <laughs> why did he have to overcome? Why was Le- it seems very extreme? <laughs> why is LeBron the villain of the movie? Yeah, yeah. Why was he the villain with another villain? I don't yeah. understand. Like they had two black dudes as a villain, and LeBron was a villain of himself. He just has a he had a bad household. His sons hated him, and he was a sh- like a shitty pop. So I'm like, why? Why did he have to be that? And why did you agree to that, LeBron? <laughs> why were you like, yeah, I put that on the skit? I think the premise of, I think you really could stick with like, instead of, here's a good rewrite. Instead of the son wanting to be a coder, that's fine. Make the son fall in love with basketball. Like Michael needed to re-fall in love with basketball in the first one. You could make it about his son falling in love with basketball. And that's just as good of a family thriller action. Whereas this one where the son like needs to decide and then the ending is like, oh, son, pats, pats him on the back. You could do both. Like, yeah, no shit, LeBron. We no didn't shit. need to go through all of this to know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had to go to the fucking cyberverse to, to <laughs> realize I can do two things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god also wait, his son had three nicer computers than i've ever owned in my entire life he owned three nicer computers than the one i do those are real computers at lebron's house that was the other thing is like M- michael jordan they made kind of seem like a regular person lebron was kind of like like had a rich ass house like a basketball court they didn't show him playing with his team at all they really dehumanized him it was like the first one was all about Michael Jordan, like, I'm a regular guy mm-hmm. like you guys. Like, I hang out with the Looney Tunes. There was no LeBron references to, like, his NBA career, really. No. Like, as far as, like, actually, like, playing or... Every, the only joke was him winning, coming back from 3-1. They said that maybe two to three times. I like the joke about his son <laughs> leaving a team to get a championship. That's a, That was a good one you referenced. Yeah, I don't, know if, <laughs> I don't know if anyone caught that irony there. That was very hilarious. Oh, oh my God. So, I mean, it's an interesting just, movie. Like I said, there was moments that legitimately made me laugh, but it was because I was like so desperate for humor. <laughs> I think that's a good way to put would it. Either you, would either you watch it again? No. No. <laughs> Definitely not. I would wa- I'm going to watch Space Jam 1. It's good. Space Jam 1 is good. It feels like a classic to me. Like if it, it feels like if aliens are looking at Earth, they will be like this was art on Earth. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Space Jam. Mm-hmm. Um so I do I just want to flag that I I don't so I'm on the Wikipedia page. I think the total film's budget was 150 million. I don't imagine that all <laughs> went to LeBron. So I haven't been able to find what he was paid yet, but we but we might need to fact check that is what I'm saying. Oh, you know what? 
when I read a little further, my thing says the same thing. So I apologize for reporting fake news. Um, All publicity is good publicity. <laughs> Stop. All right. When I read a little bit further, though, LeBron James is the first ever active NBA player to earn a billion dollars. That's pretty crazy because that's not a small amount of money. He's at all. a billionaire. So he's a billionaire. Is that's not common for basketball players, but so it's because he's doing shit like this. Oh, you know what? I was going to make this joke. He was a really bad actor this time. I didn't think he was that bad in train wreck that Amy Schumer, Bill Hader movie that he was also in. I thought he was kind of funny in that. Never saw it, but I heard he was good. He brought, he's brought in $700 million in endorsements. That's nuts. And that's only going to go up from here. Jesus. Only 330 million playing. I mean, I say only cause it's like the lower side of it, but. Um, in comparison to his endorsements, uh, our ads on this podcast have brought in two dollars and like twenty four cents. Yeah, we're rolling <laughs> in the big bucks. Thank you all for listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys make the dream happen. Yeah, shout out Anchor, baby. <laughs> this episode of Two Dudes is brought to you by Anchor. Anchor is a free podcasting platform that gives you all the tools you need to record and edit your podcast right from a phone or computer. It's personally what Alex and I used to launch Two Dudes Watch Cartoons, and it couldn't have been any easier, believe me. If we can figure it out, you can too. You can monetize your podcasts with no minimum listenership, and my favorite, favorite, favorite thing that they do is that they take care of distribution for you, meaning they will get you on all the major podcasting platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and many more without breaking a sweat. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You guys got to call LeBron and do some. <laughs> we should hook up with LeBron, see if he'll endorse this podcast. We'll give him all the money that the, the podcast makes from it. Tell him you're also a coder. I'm also a coder. Plug us into the server verse, man. <laughs> yeah, also, I feel like Don Cheadle is not happy about his performance. I'm just, I don't think Don's happy. No, about Don Cheadle can't be too happy. That That's the sign of just making a check. big pay- paycheck to me, though. You don't take on a yeah. role like that unless you're getting paid big time. Like, Don Cheadle's a good actor. Yeah, this the movie was so bad that I forgot that in the very beginning, there were two cameos with Steven Yoon and Sarah yeah. Silverman. Both, Amazing like, actors. A-list actors slash really funny people and it's just unmemorable i don't even remember that part at all yeah they were the ones trying to convince lebron originally yeah uh they were the studio execs oh yeah they could have made that way funnier yeah it was bad and lebron was right he was like no one would want to watch this movie he said that he literally said that in the beginning of the movie and i was like is this a premonition and i feel like he was right (laughs) he was warning us that should be everyone's warning he was being held captive (laughs) (laughs) so like now do they are they like at a spot where they have to make a space jam three or like are they finally like good um they've got to redeem it i don't know i think it'll be a thing where they wait another 20 years because i mean that's so that's that's the clever part of this is they're capitalizing on nostalgia for people our age who are now old enough to be spending a lot of money maybe have kids of our own yes that's what i'm saying is everyone's gonna watch it they're just perpetuating it because once our this generation of kids grows up they'll they'll put out space jam 3 it's the never-ending cycle man who watches looney tunes still that's why i think it missed that the most is that we actually watched Looney Tunes. You're right. Tunes. I watched a lot of Looney Tunes. I did think it was kind of clever how they had all the Looney Tunes like cleared out of Toon World because it's like, man, no, you're right. No one watches Looney Tunes anymore. It was kind of, of a, a, a bit of a metaphor. I like that they brought them all back and mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, the Looney Tunes are back. They were the best part of the movie. I think we've, as we've talked about this, is the Looney Tunes were they legit. They carried the movie. They carried the movie. And I think that's the core of, that's what worked in Space Jam 1 is like Michael was working with the Looney Tunes. This really felt like a LeBron movie where there just happened to be Looney Tunes in it. Yeah. I'm so disappointed. I had high hopes. Yeah. I don't know why I had high hopes. Well, because Space Jam 1 was amazing. Yeah, I think the nostalgia just had me hoping. So I hope for so much, man. I can't get over how bad the mom stars were yeah. with a goon squad. <laughs> that was the worst. Stupid name. Yeah. They were designed cool. Sure. Yes. I liked when he was water. Uh huh. And he got sucked up by a sponge. <laughs> Did that happen? 
I don't yeah, know. that's how they took care of him. Um, I'm pretty sure they got some style points for it. That was funny too when they picked him up and uh, <laughs> Sylvester was cleaning him yeah, out. He goes, "I call him the quicker picker upper." <laughs> oh man, that was good. That was a good line there. But yeah, not not many lines stand out. I think they should leave this alone now. If you guys had to pick one favorite moment of the movie, what would it be? Like we have to say one nice thing about this movie or a scene or a line. What would what would that part of the movie be? Not everybody at once. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Had to be the the Daffy Duck Michael B. Jordans. That was that was probably the best thing to me. Yeah, that was probably the high the highest high of the moment was when you thought it was gonna be Michael Jordan, it was Michael B. Jordan. I'll just not to do the same um do the same moment. I small moment, but I really, really thought it was funny that the Looney Tunes got mad when they got put in 3D animation, because I also was mad that they got put in 3D animation. And so it was funny that they <laughs> like embodied what I was thinking and they were happy when they were back to like 2D tunes. So that was pretty, that was pretty classic to me. Like that's a good note in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it, mine is uh, another Daffy Duck moment. It's literally the bathroom line. Like <laughs> that was the peak of the movie, for me, <laughs> which is, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing for this movie. <laughs> All right. I have the most obscure reference and I promise it's not in any of your notes because it's a goddamn math joke on the back of our favorite character. Al G rhythms Jersey was the letter I lowercase, which is an imaginary number, which is pretty funny to me. I don't know why. It, it, not that he's like imaginary, but he's not yeah. real. So I thought that was cool. <laughs> I didn't catch it. That's cute. Don Cheadle's whole performance. That was a performance worthy of like a spy kids movie. That's what I, kept <laughs> I was like, this is bad acting. Shots fired. <laughs> Flat uh, that's pretty good, good reference. Spy kids. Um, so if you couldn't tell, I don't think any of us are huge fans of this movie. <laughs> oh, what gave if it you, away? I gave it a two out of 10. Yeah. If you've made the unfortunate decision to watch this movie, definitely go watch Space Jam as a palate cleanser. Uh, it is a genuinely funny movie that still holds up twenty, almost 20 years later. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have any other final thoughts? I think if Rotten Tomatoes gave Space Jam one a forty four percent, this has to be like a twenty percent, twelve percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. It was yeah. really. I think we hit the nail on the head as they played on our nostalgia factor. They knew a lot of people were just going to go see it. I was one of those people. I very much was like, "Oh, I'm definitely going to go see the new Space Jam. I love that no original what. movie." And we hit the nail on the head. It was a a, a hundred and fifteen minute commercial. For HBO Max and Warner Brothers and LeBron, we watched him not enjoy too much of this movie and get a fat check at the end, which is not the type of stuff we normally like to review. But I will say I've had a damn good time talking about it with you guys. <laughs> and I honestly think Classic. if people have watched the movie, they should listen to this. They will get a lot of joy out of this podcast <laughs> because we roasted on it pretty hard. <laughs> and I think the big takeaway is go watch Space Jam 1. Give Michael Jordan that credit of yes. decent acting, a great, a much better, I wouldn't say great story, a much better story than this one. And just a genuine film. Whereas this one yeah. was an ad, a, a, a one big ad. New legacy, my ass. <laughs> it felt so forced. I felt like I was being preached to the entire time to come buy some shit. I felt like I was forced to watch it. Like they tied <laughs> me down. Yeah, well, so in on the Wikipedia page, the last uh, sentence of the uh, top paragraph that just tells yeah. the overall summary says, Film has grossed over 73 million worldwide and received generally negative reviews from critics who found it spoiled with product placement by the studio and lacking in the original film's quirky and self-referential humor. And I don't think you can 
Boom. Sum it up much better than that. It is just one big commercial. You, I don't get why you can't quote Wikipedia in a paper. My, They're always right. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Wikipedia is the best source. It's the best source. I have considered, I have like made a one-time donation to Wikipedia. I'll be honest. This is a Wikipedia endorsement. I made a one-time endorsement because I literally was like, they give me so much information for free and i always trust it and all of every teacher i ever had said not to trust it and that was just something i blatantly ignored from every single teacher sorry rant over i recommend wikipedia <laughs> yeah so takeaways watch space jam one and use wikipedia for <laughs> college papers <laughs> <laughs> Takeaway number three is all publicity is good publicity. <laughs> wow, we should have like a nice wrap up like that more often. That, those are our three points for the day. <laughs> they were down by a thousand points. <laughs> <laughs> I think they only scored like 70 to 80 in the first movie. Like, oh, that's a little more believable. <laughs> They were down 1,300, or it was like 1,037 to like 72. It was like, are you shitting me? And then LeBron had the best second half defensive <laughs> performance ever. These guys didn't score. Typical <laughs> NBA fashion, only showing up for the second half. They went on a 1,000 to 2 run <laughs> for a comeback. I, I just it didn't that doesn't build suspense. What was the point of doing that? the first one? The like, scores felt oh, suspenseful. Well. This one did not since it was so unrealistic. Yeah, the ending even felt suspenseful when Michael Jordan's arm extended 49 feet and dropped in the basket. This game when he shot, I didn't even know it was a game when no, he I shot. Didn't. Great point, Myron. Let me rewind. I missed all the points they scored. <laughs> It's all style points. It was all style points, bro. That's how this podcast wins. We don't get the most viewers, but God damn, we have the most style points. It's all style points. <laughs> style point goes. I think that's all we've got for this, though. Myron, do you have anything? Uh, obviously, you want to talk about your podcast a little, where people can find it. Uh, this is a good time for that. Um, yeah, you can find me on all platforms. Uh, Sports Time with my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. YouTube. I do sports podcasts, generally basketball and football. Every now and then I'll dabble in some uh, hockey, baseball. You'll never hear me talk about golf because it's the worst sport ever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just uh, tune into my podcast if you want to hear something different than you won't hear on your general sports networks. Um, always keeping it fresh. Always got some new interviews with new people um, just talking about the game. And so thankful for being on your guys' show, man, for sure. Two Dudes with Cartoons is dope. You guys got to keep it up, for sure. We loved having you. As you can tell, we have no sports background, so it was nice having you to fill in sports references. Some that I assumed, and you were able to correct, which is kind of <laughs> nice, and also you know, the announcer and all that. So we appreciate you coming here. Now, we, like I said, we don't have a ton of sports background, but you called golf the worst. I'm pretty sure there's a movie that's a golf movie that's called The Greatest Game Ever Played. Don't quote me on that, but I, I'm pretty sure you're wrong. If there's a golf movie. If that movie is right. I hope there's not a golf movie. That sounds so anticlimactic. I'm pretty sure Shia LaBeouf is in it. It's oh. called The Greatest Game Ever Played. Look it up. Oh my God, yeah. 2005, starring Shia LaBeouf. It's streaming on Disney Plus if you want to check it out. <laughs> 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. This must be better than Space Jam. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, this has been great. If you guys are, you know, following NBA or uh, NFL, definitely check out Myron's podcast. He puts out a lot of great content and he puts out a pretty regular content, more regular than me and Evan are. So, mm -hmm. like I said, go check him out. We appreciate you being here with us. Thank you, man. What's the next cartoon you guys got? We just recorded an episode on this movie called Spirited Away, which we would highly recommend. Um, that'll that'll be actually released after this one. Okay. So we're releasing this first so the people can go watch Spirited Away after they listen to this and then come listen along with us. You guys should mess with some curious George. <laughs> What'd you say? Was that a serious reference? <laughs> curious George. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> I'm not, I'm Wait, I, there was a feature film that had a great <laughs> soundtrack by Jack Johnson. I'm not going to lie. Is, Brian, the wait, is there a cartoon, like a child's cartoon called that's, well, I know there is, but you want us to cover legit Curious George? Dude, 
He's a, he's a curious cat, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never read the books? <laughs> um, you gotta do one of the books. You will add it to the list. It was add definitely it. a featured film. <laughs> Oh, well, this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> Curious, George. Thank you. Any closing thoughts from anyone? Yeah. Evan, Myron, what do you guys have? Bizarre's die from that one. <laughs> That's a perfect way to end it. I love it, man. It's been good. Thank you, guys. Oh, man. Yeah. Thank you for being here, Myron. <laughs> That'll do it for this episode of Two Dudes Watch Cartoons. Thank Peace. you, Myron. My uh, name is Evan. And my name is also Evan. Just kidding. It's Alex. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that's all, folks. <laughs> that's great. That was awesome. Two Dudes Watch Cartoons.